Let the church say amen. Oh, come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let the church say amen. God bless you this morning. We're going to get started. And our youth is on program today. Amen. So, so come on, youth, and lead us in our worship this morning. God is good all the time. See, y'all forgot, didn't you? God is good what? All the time and all the time. God is good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord Church.
Noah. May we all please stand for the reading of God's word. Philippians, Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be here today to pray. Come on, y'all, get them babies. Come on. It's like, it's like my mama said, that's so sweet. That, that's them sweet, them little babies up there doing what God called them to do. And it takes some courage. And all y'all looking at them and stuff, looking at them and stuff, and them little churn. Just a few announcements, and then we're going to continue with our service today. Amen? Amen, 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 amen. Now, on uh, Saturday, July 22nd, the youth ministry is planning a trip to the, to the Atlanta uh, Aquarium. Amen? Amen? And all youth are asked to sign up. And parents, we need you to be chaperones during that time. So uh, that's going to be July 22nd. Also, we need you to fill out a permission slip for all children to be uh, on this trip. Amen? And you can get a uh, permission slip from Evangelist Burton, who is heading up that, that trip. Amen? Or in the hallway. They're in the hallway. And some out front in the front vestibule. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. And if you want to be a chaperone or going to be a chaperone, please let Sister Burton know. Amen? Now, on Saturday, July 29th, uh, we are headed to Mebane, North Carolina, for the for the um, pastoral anniversary of Dr. William Wilson, and our pastor will be the um, speaker for today, and that's at, at Mebbin. Now, you can uh, get a flyer from Miss Loretta, Loretta, Sister Bush. Loretta Bush, raise your hand. She's back there, so if you're going, make sure you get with her to get your information. And other than that, just make sure that now this coming Friday, uh, excuse me, this coming Wednesday, will be our Bible study, and we're going to, last Bible study, and we're going to take a break for the summer. Amen? Amen? And please be in attendance this Wednesday at 6 o'clock for, for our Bible study. Amen? Then make sure at 9 o'clock sharp, we start Sunday school, and we're going to continue Sunday school through the summer. Amen? Amen. And then we uh, want to make sure that you participate on our online prayer meeting when, excuse me, Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Amen? amen? Let the church say amen. amen. Amen, and God bless you. Pastor? Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Y'all do it like y'all really love the Lord now. Amen. amen. It's a family and friends celebration. Nah, 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 bro William. Bro William, you, you got your guitar with you. You always have it with you. I know you ain't leaving this moment. Lord, I really want to hear something you got. Amen. Uh, we want to welcome you today. Um, we're going to have our welcome address by Mrs. Jesse Andrews. Once I, once I, I want all, fam all the church family to introduce your, your friends that you invited to this service this day. All right, church family, y'all don't know it. And have them stand up when you announce them. Okay. Anybody else? Good morning. Hey, Mama. Hey, man. Hallelujah. All right. Okay. Hey, who your daddy? 
Joseph Overton, all right. Amen. Do we have another? Hey, Selena. Amen. Do we have another? Ms. Emma, good to see you. While I'm standing, I got my brother. John, raise your hand. Amen. Amen. All right. This is fun, y'all. Next year, it's going to get better. And thank y'all for wearing y'all jerseys, y'all dress down. Sharon, you ain't standing up for my guests. Are you? Okay. okay, all right. So, Shirley, you and, you and Lois, y'all, okay, I get it, all right, amen. Anybody else? I don't want to miss nobody. And I want to say to the church family, thank y'all yesterday um, for how we, uh, we helped out with um, the homegoing services of one of our members, uh, Mr. Laura Hammond. We thank you for your attendance, and we thank you for what you did on yesterday. Also, we have, uh, you invited to a 50th anniversary. I think that's what we get. Nope. Miss Janice Sapp, she's going to do the welcome. Jessica. Miss Jessica, come on, do the welcome. I can't. I don't know. Amen. Y'all give me just a mic. Miss Jessica, hold my mic. Good morning, church. First, I would like to give honor to God, who's the head of my life. And I would like to acknowledge our esteemed pastor, Reverend Blocker, elite first lady, Cynthia Blocker, pulpit guests, members, and friends. I would like to welcome you to the Macedonia Baptist Church, better known as the Big M. Amen. And I hope you all enjoy our family and friends celebration today. And again, welcome. Welcome, welcome. All right. Y'all still having fun? Amen. Amen. I got another guest walking in. That's my cousin. He walking in. So. We say good morning. Hallelujah. That's all right. All right. I also like to we'll just lift up the sick and the shed in while I'm standing. Uh, Deacon James Clifford, I talked with him this week. He seems to be doing real good. Uh, Deacon Arthur Terry, Deaconess Viola Henderson, Deaconess Evelyn Lowe is with us this morning. Amen. Good to see you. Brother Lamar Smith. Sister Vivian Tompkins, Sister Charlene Overton, Sister Flossie Halls, Brother Robert Smith, and Brother Daryl Dandy. We, we wish those persons, um, we want to wish them a speedy recovery. Amen. And we ask that you lift up a prayer this week for them in your leisure time. Amen. 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 I think that's all for me. Am I missing anything? All right. And I'm going to add Minister Henry Bryant to the sick list. Amen. Hallelujah, y'all pray for him. All right. And I got one more guest. He didn't stand up. I guess he'll stand up. And he's of age. He can speak for himself. Yeah. You know, um, Deacon Styles, it's good to have a mentor. A mentor. And, and that's what Bishop is to me. He's my mentor. Um, out of all my years of preaching, he has never led me in the he share his experience, his strength, and his hope for me. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for our friendship. And he's my daughter's pastor. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's the one came up here and took a singing after me. <laughs> Amen. Something wrong with folk can't last sometime. Amen. All right. God bless you. And we're going to move on into the service. Amen.
to make sure y'all paying attention, all right? Good morning. Good morning. Please stand facing the wall following the ushers for tithes and offerings this morning. Everybody given. Will you please stand for prayer, please? Our Father, which I have in heaven. Father God, it's another day and time to give loud up to me the number one more time. That's enough to say thank you. thank you. Father God, bless this offering as you see we stand in need of. But most of all, bless those who had it and didn't give it, Father God. Bless those, Father God, that need it right now, Father God. That's what this office is for. To help the needy this morning, Father God. Help us to be strong, Father God, in your holy and righteous name, Father God. Give us power in this prayer, Father God, to go from one degree to another, Father God. Have mercy on our soul this morning. Love us from one degree to another, Father God. Your love is all we need this morning, Father God. Now, Father God, I ask you to bless this pastor, Father God, as he bring the bread of life to us this morning. Have mercy on our pastor. The Father God this morning. Give him strength this morning, but most of all, give the first lady strength to stand by him this morning in bad times and good times this morning. It is your will, Father God, that it will be done in earth as it is in heaven this morning. Give us strength this morning to keep on going from one day to, to, to another, Father God. It's time out for playing church this morning, Father God. Have mercy on our soul this morning, Father God. Now, Father God, when we get out so we can't go no more, Father God, I ask that you give us a home in your kingdom, Father God, where you gone so far and so long ago to prepare a place for this is our seventh prayer. Amen. 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 Amen.
आपको कहें scientist of the gospel. He is a pontificator of the charygmia. Right. He, is, he is my friend and he's my step pastor. And he is, he is a, my go-to guy. Mayor Quayal, come on, Ryan. Um, yeah, Mayor Quayal, y'all come on. I love our youth. They all energized me this morning. I was, they had me running all over the place this morning, and, and y'all came and y'all gave me what I needed. Thank you so much. Amen, amen, amen. But after the choir sing, the next preaching voice you will hear will be that of my friend, my, my step pastor, uh, Bishop Bobby McCarter. Y'all hear him. He's going to give you a word. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, y'all, 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 come on, let's praise God now. Amen.
some praise in here this morning. Let's give it up for this male choir. God bless you today. I don't know how you normally would do it, but uh, I want everybody to stand. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you and we praise you and we give your name glory for all that you're doing. I pray now, God, that you have me behind your cross. You speak through me. You give your people ears to hear and hearts to receive. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I will ever praise you and give you the glory. In Jesus' name. And let the church say it, amen. amen. Well, while you're standing, while you're standing, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 39, verse 1 through verse 6, and Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and part of us, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, and Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down by them. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in, his, in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him, and he made him overseer over his house. Jesus. And all that he had, he put into his hand. Amen. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian house for Joseph's sake. And the Lord blessing of the Lord was upon all that had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a godly person, well favored. I want to talk this morning briefly to encourage some heart. Your waiting time is not wasted time. You may be seated. Satan, I appreciate the Lord for this morning. So glad and so honored to be here and thank God for my friend, my brother, uh, Pastor Dale Blocker. I thank God for him. I found favor with him some years ago. And like he said, I pastor his daughter, L.J. West. Amen. So I thank God for First Lady Amen. and to all of you and all the visitors. And I want to bring you greetings all the way from Crawford, Mississippi. Well, our pastor, amen, the chair of the Full Gospel Baptist Church for 42 years. So I'm not a novice. So I came to preach this morning. And I thank God for you. Like I said, my subject this morning, your waiting time is not wasted. Matter of fact, you need to look at somebody and say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. I'm a neighbor talker. Your waiting time is not wasted time. Waiting time is not wasted. Every step counts. This message is for the people who are sick and tired and frustrated and asking God, how long do I have to wait? Your announcement today is you're in a waiting period 
but not a wasted period. God is up to something while you wait. The Bishop Ivy Hilliard says that life is full of defining moments. And how you have those moments determine the course of your life. He says the defining moment is not a moment in time where your righteous kingdom commitment get tested. It is the place where your decision reflects your true character, conviction, com commitment, and courage. The decision you make say something about the character you live in. The right decision can position you for promotion and possibilities. A defining moment is that moment where you are forced to show the strength of your commitment when you're in a play, when you are in a place you rather not be. The decision you make when you are in a place you would rather not be determine whether or not you are ready for elevation or promotion. Look at the story of Joseph. Many people would say that Joseph's defining moment was when he told his brothers about his dream. And they hated him even the more. Other people say that his defining moment was when he was thrown in a pit and sold into slavery. But let me submit to you this morning that I believe, along with many theologians, that Joseph's defining moment was when he was working in the house of Potiphar. Verse 2 says that Joseph was successful and he prospered in all that he did. Matter of fact, uh, Genesis 39 and 2, and the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. In other words, Joseph did his assignment with diligent and excellent. I want you to get that diligent mean to continue to work in spite of opposition. To pursue of excellence is what propels him to a great place of influence. Joseph was working on an assignment that he did not want. And he was working on an assignment that was beneath him. I'm going somewhere. But it was, but it was how he managed his assignment that started his journey to elevation and influence. God gave Joseph success because he served with excellence in a position that was less than what he saw in his dream. I feel my help now. I feel my help. Joseph ended up in the place of influence because he started in a place of excellence. You're missing me. Too many people sell down in a place of just enough. They study just enough. Pray just enough. They give just enough. They love just enough. They, they praise and worship just enough. They did just enough to get by. But when you are committed to excellence, you will never sell for good enough or just enough. Y'all be talking. God has done too much for you for you to be satisfied with doing just enough for him. Do I have some witnesses in here? If greater lives in you, and doing less should never be on you. I need some help in here. Don't allow where you are to dictate how you are. Oh God, God, God watches how you have assignment. That's mean I can elevate the realness of your character and the realness of your integrity. Watch it. Based on how you act. When you are operating in a place where you don't want to be. Which means character and integrity do not depend on the situation. You should have good character and good integrity in spite of the situation. Joseph is not in the best of situation. He is not in his ideal environment. Joseph had bragged and boasted on being a leader and look at where he is. Mm. He is a slave when he dreamed of being a leader. He is a worker when he dreamed of being a boss. The situation Joseph is in is the very opposite of the situation he, he declared in his dream. Y'all do know the story, don't you? And yet, in a less than desirable situation, Joseph operates in excellence 
as if he is in the situation he dreamed of. Joseph is doing his job like it is in his dream job, like it's within his dream job. When in reality, it is a job beneath his dream and beneath his potential. The Bible says that Joseph, watch it, was successful. That means he did not allow where he was to dictate how he was. Oh, God. Too many people respond to their circumstances instead of responding in their circumstances. When you respond to your circumstances, that's when you become crybabies, whiners and complainers and excuse makers. You have, you have two choices. Two choices. You can operate in excellence or you can operate in immaturity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's all right. I'm going to preach anyway. You can operate in excellence or you can operate in immaturity. Watch it. If you only give God your best when you like where God has you, then that shows that you are not as mature as God wants you to be. Maturity is seen when you don't like where God has you, but you give him your best. You do your best and you honor and glorify him no matter where you are. Operating in excellence does not depend on your situation. Oh, God, the Bible said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Y'all ain't going to talk this morning. I said, the Bible said, the Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times, in my ups and my downs, in my good and my bad. That's what the Bible said. The Bible said, give thanks unto the Lord in all time. It's time to grow up. So you can give God your best even when you don't like where he has you. During this waiting time, you can handle it better what God is doing in your life when you serve for assignment and not for applause. Uh, you have to serve because it is a calling and not just to receive compliments. You know, some folks, I don't know about here in Georgia, but some folks, they don't want to do nothing if you don't give them praise and send flowers. They want to be seen. And, you know, I know ain't nobody here in, in, in Augusta like that, but, but, but where I came from, some folks just want the applause. You know, they want that pat on the back. And, and what they don't know, people to pat you on the back this moment and stab you the next one. That, Y'all don't do that here. That's all. But the Bible showed that his master saw Joseph. Joseph was not serving to be seen, but he was seen. Joseph was not serving to be seen, but he was seen. The Bible said that his master saw Joseph. Matter of fact, matter of fact, the Bible says in Genesis 39 and 3, and his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Always be mindful that people are looking at how you have the assignment on your life. That means God has somebody who is ready to bless you, but sometime, and sometimes to promote you. And many times you don't even notice they are watching you. Because you are not serving to manipulate a moment, you are serving to give God God's glory in the moment. And you you don't realize it, but there are somebody on, on, a, on, on a private assignment who is watching how you manage your situation. And they are ready and in position to be used by God to elevate you. Stop thinking that people are always trying to control your life when in reality they are trying to bless your life. Joseph, Joseph was successful in everything he did. On the job, he did not want. Joseph is a servant. Somebody says servant, servant. Joseph's dream was about being a king and being a leader. And here he is in a position that is beneath his potential. Pharaoh, Pharaoh noticed how Joseph worked with the right attitude and with excellence. 
That's how Pharaoh knew that Joseph was ready for elevation. Let, let me say it. Let me say it this way. Joseph is ready for elevation based on his attitude. See, can I, can I, can I stop and pause right there? It won't cost you nothing. I don't care how many degrees you have. If your attitude is nasty, and I, I know people that got with a 12th grade diploma got a job that people that had a master's degree couldn't get. You know why? It was not because they were smart, but the one had the master had a bad attitude. And the one had a diploma, the job hired and said, I tell you what, if you work with us, we'll pay your way through school. It's your attitude that cause your altitude. Your attitude can cause how high you fly. Y'all don't like that, but that's okay. When the Lord is on you, when the Lord anoints you because he sees you giving God your best, you won't have to brag and bring attention to yourself in order to be noticed. Now, I'm a little preacher. I'm a little country preacher in a place called Crawford, population 600. But the church is bigger than the town. I said, I said it again. I said the population. When I was doing my dissertation, I did it, uh, Pastor Blocker, on the city of Crawford. I, I learned some stuff about Crawford that I didn't even know until I did my dissertation. Three-fourths of Crawford is poverty. When I said earlier, you, you can't let nobody define your moment. Number one, you got to know who you are and whose you are. It don't make no difference where you are if God is on your life. I don't care what folks say. God can bless you in the cornfield. He can bless you in the cotton field. He can bless you in New York City just like he can in Augusta, Georgia. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. But I want to stay, but you got to stay humble. When folks said what I couldn't do, when folks said you'd never do that, I, I just kept humble and kept before the Lord. And the Lord showed people what he can do in a poverty-stricken area. And I'm not boasting or bragging. Pastor Block would have been there. Some of you have been there. We started out. Can I just testify here? We started out with nothing. 42 years ago. With nothing. But the Lord gave me a dream like Joseph. And it took some years before the dream could come to pass. But the Lord was in every step. We started from zero. Built the church in 1992. And it's called $555,000. Watch this. Because the people mentality was so low, God said, don't use a half a million. Use 500000 Now, what's the difference? <laughs> But 500,000 sound a whole lot better than a half a million. Y'all, 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 y'all will catch it tomorrow, y'all. Y'all will catch it on your way home. But what I'm saying, God did it right there when the folks said, if you get it up, you won't pay the light bill. I'm telling you what God can do. When boasting on what we was doing, we were boasting on what God was doing. You see what I'm saying? And God did it. But make a long story short, today we got three buildings. Y'all ain't talking to me. Because I didn't let nobody define my moment. I knew what God had called me to be. And I knew what God called me to where he want me to preach at. But you know what? You know what? From a $500,000 church in 42 years ago, today we were $5.6 million. And every hill, Macedonia, Big M, or whatever y'all call yourself, God can do whatever you want him to do, and it don't take a whole lot of folk. Watch this. We worth that, and we don't owe nobody a penny. God can do whatever you want him to do in your life. If he bless you individually, he can bless a church collectively. Joseph Master saw, let me, let me get back to my preaching here so I can get out of y'all way. Joseph Master saw the way in which Joseph operated, and he knew that. 
the hands of the Lord was on Joseph. When you live with integrity and when you live with character and when you try to give God your best, you don't have to worry about anything. People will see how you operate and they will know that it had to be the hands of the Lord on your life. When you operate in the, in the right spirit, God will allow everything you touch and everything connect to you to be blessed. In the spirit realm, the opposite is true as well because, watch this, when you have a bad attitude, everything connected to you get cursed. And some people wonder why they can't go any further or higher. It's not their gift. It might be their attitude. And let me start. You got to know who you run with this day and time. Some folks you need to cut or loose. Some folks you need to drop off of Facebook. Some folks you need to just drop off of Instagram and say, bye bye, baby. I love you, but you've been holding me back too long. I got to go a step higher. Somebody shout hallelujah. Joseph Master saw the favor on Joseph's life. And he decided to elevate him. Man, I want to holler so bad. Ah, Lord. That, that. Joseph's spirit of excellence, watch this, was seen. In the Hebrew language, it says that his master watched him for a while. His master watched Joseph long enough to see if his attitude was real. That means Joseph's elevation was seen and time. That means Joseph's elevation was not forced, it was not rushed, it was not pushed, it was not manipulated. Joseph did his job until God was ready to elevate him. Let me tell you, those of you that got the anointing on your life, don't let nobody push you out there before your time. Wait on your time. Joseph did his job until God was ready to elevate him. Don't allow people to push you out in front when it's not your time to be out in front. If you are not careful and if you do not trust the process, then you will be tempted by people who will look at your gift and assume it is your time. Learn to stay where you are and bloom where you are planted and wait on God to move you. If you want applause and not assignment, if you want compliment and not a call, not your calling, then it would be easy for the enemy to manipulate you in believing that you are being mistreated. Some people look at your gift and they assume that you should be in a greater assignment. Some people will pump you up and tell you how wonderful you are and how you should be doing something else. When you are immature and have low self-confidence, watch out for people who pump you up and make the assumption that you ought to be doing greater. What they don't realize is elevation is not gift-related. Elevation is attitude-related. Be, be faithful where God has you and somebody watching you who is ready to elevate you. Be careful around people who push you out front what, when, when it's not your time. They will push you into a place where you are in over your head. They are trying to manipulate your moment. Be still, be faithful, and check your attitude. If you change your attitude, a new life will begin. You don't need a great situation when you serve a great God. The Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph. Over and over, you see those words in the life of Joseph, the Lord was with him. When you do a study on the life of Joseph, you will find that those words were used when Joseph was faced in challenging situations that he would rather not be in. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. The Lord was with Joseph in the pit in prison, and now in Potiphar's house. You see the words the Lord were with him when Joseph was operating in a situation that were beneath his potential, beneath his gift, and beneath his dream. You see those words when Joseph had to find a way to operate in excellence when he was in an unfavorable situation. And I'm almost out of here. 
The writer is letting us know that Joseph was in something he did not want to be in. But he got through it because the Lord was with him. Nobody and nothing could stop Joseph's success because the Lord was with him. Nothing hindered his favor, his favor progress, forward progress because the Lord was with him. When, will you look back over your life and think about some stuff? That you got out of, and your and your and, and your only explanation is the Lord was with me. I know somebody here can look back on your life and see the stuff the Lord has brought you out of. And you look back with what nobody hands on me but the Lord. But when your enemy was cutting you down, when your friends turned their back on you, the Lord was with you. And the only reason you made it thus far is because the Lord was with you. Matter of fact, you need to look around at the neighbor's tail and point at their neighbor's neighbor, the Lord was with you. And he is with me. When you were broke and you didn't know how you were going to pay that bill, the Lord was with you. When you were sick and you didn't know how you were going to be healed, somebody shout, the Lord was with me. When you were in trouble and you didn't know how to get out and you looked back and your child was in trouble and everybody turned their back on you, but you went on your knees and you talked to the Lord and you looked back and that child said, Mama, I'm coming home. The Lord was with you. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you for being with me. Thank you for being with me. When you studied the life of Joseph, there was not a time that Joseph said, the Lord is with me. Y'all missed that. You missed it. When you studied the life of Joseph, there was not a time that Joseph said, the Lord was with him. See how quiet y'all got? The writer say that the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph didn't say it. It was the writer explanation and commentary based on his observation of that Joseph did and overcame. The writer was saying that with everything against Joseph, the only way he was able to do what he did was because the Lord was with him. Do you know why some folks don't like you? Because they are watching how you are being blessed. And the only explanation they got is the Lord is with you. When you know the Lord is with somebody, you better keep your hands off of them. And give God some glory. And thank God because the hands of the Lord is on their life. When people come against you, you just be faithful. And tell God, I thank you for keeping your hands on me. Joseph had to be faithful in part of his house because being a slave in that, pla in that, in that palace was being then, being dead in a pit. Just like being dead in a pit. Remember, they threw him in a pit to die. The Bible said they threw him in a dry well, which means there was no water in it. There was nothing in it to break his fall. They threw him away to break him. They threw him away to destroy him. But they did not realize that the Lord was with him. And when the Lord is with you, you will survive things that are designed to break you. When the Lord is with you, you will recover in things that were designed to destroy you. And some folks have been trying to throw you away. Some folks have been trying to block you. But you need to know today that God is not going to let that happen. Matter of fact, you need to pat somebody and say, neighbor, God is not going to let that happen. The thing that was designed to kill you, God is going to use them to promote you. So Joseph does not like where he is. It is beneath his potential. But Joseph still has a reason to shout because if they had left him in that pit, he would not be alive. To everybody who is listening to me, you may not like where you are, but it is better than where you could have been. Stand on your feet, everybody. In fact, you can remember where you used to be. And thank God you are not there anymore. Thank God you are not where you were. And you are not who you were. Until he moves you, be faithful where you are. Until he elevates you. 
to the, the place that he want to put you. Somebody put your hands together and give God some glory. You got to change your attitude. And God will do great things for you. You got to change your attitude. See, we can't, we can't get off our knees praying and then get up and hate somebody. Hallelujah. It's all in your attitude. Nobody controls your attitude but you. And at some point, you got to check yourself. Don't let your loyalty to your attitude cause you to miss blessings. Y'all miss that. Don't let your loyalty to your attitude cause you to miss blessings. Don't let your commitment to your attitude cause you to miss what God has next for you. God, give God the glory. You need to give God your best. Your attitude and your excellence are the thing that cause you to be promoted. Operate in excellence. And one of the key things in my found word, I don't care what other folks say, you better love this man. You better love this man. He's the man God has placed in this house to oversee you. And what people don't understand, this man has the authority from God to watch out for your soul. I'm going to say that again. He has the authority to watch out for your soul. Amen. I've been doing it for 42 years. And God hasn't let me down yet. You know why? I kept the right attitude. I didn't let folks pump me. I see folks pastor block it all the time. Pastor said, man, man, you're a millionaire. I like within, I, I know I'm not a millionaire. But you know what I tell them? I'm like the Pope. <laughs> y'all don't know, y'all don't know about the Pope. The Pope owned everything. But yet he don't own nothing. That's the attitude I got. I don't own nothing, but when I get ready to go, I got something to go in. I get ready to fly, I got something to fly in. I don't own no airplane, but I go where I want. <laughs> Lift your hands and give God some praise in this house today. God bless you. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's your waiting time. It's not wasted time. Because when I look. Down the line, and I wonder sometimes how I church by water baptism Christian experience we even have watch care watch care simply means that you can join this church and you have a covering you need to be covered so make your decision now this is the right time because you don't have to wait in that long
babe, I want to, I want to hear you. I want to hear you. Somebody at a crossroad. Somebody's at a crossroad. your cares upon all because God cares for you. Hallelujah. We can lay aside every weight that so easily besets us. You don't have to carry that, that problem. You don't have to carry that burden. Just give it. Give it to give it to the one who can solve the problem. y'all to pray for our graduates. I see Sister Trinity in the house. and we, 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 we bless you for your next step in life. And There's some Sangerton girls in here that graduated with honors. And, and I want you, that's you, you come on up here and bring your sisters with you. Hallelujah. Y'all know y'all got to come. We, we ask God to bless you this next chapter in your life. God got some great things, but the pastor said that it's in your attitude. Amen. So we, we want to pray now. Hallelujah. Eternal and all wise God, oh Heavenly Father, we come now humble in spirit in the name of Jesus, we come, O oh God, that you let your Holy Spirit rain down on this circle this morning. Rain down on this waiting congregation in the name of Jesus. O oh, Father God, you speak it and it shall be done. We must believe, O oh, Father God, that you are all-powerful, all-knowing, and you are a wise God. Oh, Father God, you already know the bow down here that's before you at this time. You already know the situations, oh, Father God. Oh, Father God, we cast our cares upon you. In the name of Jesus, come now, oh God, be thy will. In the name of Jesus, some come for one thing, dear Master, and some come for another. For that you already know. In the name of Jesus. Father God, you said that you will never leave us, nor will you forsake us. This we must believe, O oh Father God. O oh Father God, the message was about not altitude, but attitude. In the name of Jesus, seek ye first the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, bless this waiting congregation. Those, O oh Father God, that have lost loved ones. Oh, Father God, wrap your arms of comfort and peace around them in the name of Jesus. Give me strength, oh God, for what I'm struggling in the name of Jesus. I've lifted up my eyes unto the hills which cometh my help. It is you, oh God, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, and the father of Jacob. We don't need Abraham, we don't need Isaac, and we don't want Jacob, but we need you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, oh, Father God, you are the creator of all things. You have all power. You went up on Calvary's cross, Father God, you hung, bled, and you died. 
in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, and then you ask the Father to forgive us, for we know not what we do. But right now, but right now, oh God, we come. We come. We come. Let your spirit rain down upon us, oh God. For whatever the need is, oh, Father God, you already know. We ask that you prepare us for the challenges that lies ahead. Go before us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we come in servant prayer. For whatever the need is, we lift our heads unto you, Lord. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, and every believer of God, say amen, amen, and amen. now word for God's people. Amen. Put that subject up there again. And I want to stay up there until we close out because somebody might be still struggling. Lord, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. Your waiting time is not wasted time. Now, Minister Sherry William, you got that right. Your waiting time Bishop, why you came and did that, man? I needed to hear that. Sometimes I feel like I'm wasting my time. Sometimes I feel like nobody really listens or cares. But then I got the word. He said, your waiting time is not wasted time. I'm going to keep on trudging. I'm going to keep on with a good attitude because I know that in the end, I want to hear God say, well done. Thy good and faithful servant. Amen. We're going to let you go. It's so good to see all our visitors. I had another brother and sister-in-law to walk in. Y'all wave your hand. Amen. I got a brother and a sister-in-law. Y'all wave your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, somebody. And, and I got a cousin came in. and Wave your hand, Junior. Love that boy that night. <laughs> We the same age, though. but he was a grown man when I was a little boy, so <laughs> amen, amen. There's something wrong with folk can't last sometimes. It's so good to see y'all. I'm going to let you go. Um, and Shirley, you and Lois, I got a bone to pick with y'all. Y'all stood up for her. I thought y'all was for me. I'll, I get you. I get you, okay? Amen. Thank y'all so much for coming. I want to thank, thank those persons who prepared the food. And, and the persons who, who orchestrated this whole day, um, we got some good-looking decorations back there, and I want to thank that. Ashley, you got any help, too. Amen. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you all for what you do. And we, Now we got the right attitude to keep doing what God wants us to do. Amen. Rain my word. Well, we're going to ask Bishop to close us out. And we're going to ask all the ministers and to go on this side. That means all to go on that side. And, and, and our guests, we want to get y'all in and get y'all served. Y'all go on this side, okay? Amen. So at this time, I'm going to ask Bishop to come back and say his greetings and the blessing of the food. And 
I want to recognize our ministers, amen, Minister Felder, Reverend Thurman, and who else we got out there? The rest of them. Evangelist, where we? Oh, you hear that in the booth? Okay, amen. Thank you, thank you for your search. See, she all around, girl. She she do it all. She sings, she directs, she doing the sound today, and she can preach. Amen, amen, hallelujah, amen. Thank y'all so much, and I'm gone. I'm out. Bishop. God bless y'all today. Say it was an honor to be here today. Thank God for my friend. I love some block. Him. Sometimes he don't call me, and I and I calls him. I said, "Man, you, you haven't moved, have you?" But no, I'm still around. That's the way we got it with one another. So I want you to keep my wife in prayer. She's with me, but she wasn't feeling too hot. And I told her, "Let's stay back at the camper. And I'm gonna check on her." I'm here, and I certainly appreciate y'all. And, and you wondering about that subject. The Lord gave me that. I'm going to let you go. Uh, when he gave me that, I was state bishop for our organization for 24 years. And at my age, I was getting tired. So I was going to quit everything, give the church up and everything. And I found that they didn't want me to retire from our organization. And I said, at my age, I got to stand back and let some younger person have this and, and help them along. But I was so frustrated in my spirit that I thought God wanted me to give up everything. But when I retired from my organization, then his weights lifted. And I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? He said, I didn't tell you to quit the church. I told you to retire from the organization. He gave me that. Your waiting time was not wasted. Thank you. Be blessed, Macedonia. It's good to be here. Next time I come, I hope to have a bus load. All right, yeah, you know? Amen. So y'all be blessed and keep us in y'all prayer. Me and my wife and family, we love you and appreciate you. Matter of fact, I know y'all looking at me. Some of y'all think I'm a white man. <laughs> But, uh, oh, yeah, I, I, I know, I know, because I'm about to, you know, the light is in here, and I said, some of these folks thinking I'm a, Pastor Block, and I brought a white man from Mississippi. <laughs> but, you know, if, if, <laughs> if I was, I'm still God, man, right? That's right. So, but I just want y'all to know, I'm black <laughs> Amen. I've just kind of got mixed up there in my brain, but I couldn't do nothing about that. So leave that alone. So but I appreciate the Lord. And it's it's it's, a, it's one Sunday morning I was sitting in my office and the phone rang and old white guy about 50 miles. He said, uh, is the pastor in? I said, Yes, sir. This is he. He said, By God. He said, I want to know how can you preach to all them black folks? I didn't tell him no different. I said, sir, they people just like everybody. I said, have a good day. <laughs> God bless you. Love you. Appreciate you. Love one another. Let's catch a neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, my love you till the day you die. Father, I thank you and I bless your name. Lord, as we leave this place from this day forward, we pray that you go with us. Stay with us. I plead the blood over every individual here today, whether they're driving or flying, that you cover them with your blood. And Father, I thank you for this pastor, Pastor Darrell Blanca. Father, that you would let him live a long time. But I thank you that you put a friend in my life. And I give your name glory. Thank you for his wife. Thank you for his children. And Father, as we leave this place today, but not from your presence, I pray for this food, for the nursing our bodies. Bless the hands prepared. God, I pray that you sanctify, purify in Jesus' name. And let the church say amen. amen. Let the church.